This meeting is being recorded. Hi, this is Ann uh, with a presentation that will be a little bit longer than the standard. I'm going to um, do some live coding. Uh, I've thought it through, but I have never done this actual exercise before. And what I'm trying to convey is a slightly different way to approach um, coding, um, a way that I think produces a little less frustration and a lot more fun. And, um, and it's specific to the assignment for this week, but I think it, um, I'm hoping that it can convey some ways for you to approach both making new code and changing code that give you some tools you can use to reduce frustration and have a little more fun. So specifically, um, this is about how to face a journey. The assignment for this week is to take um, a, is, is to create a face object. And I still have this problem that because I have done class-based objects for so long, I use that term when I should not. So we're going to, in the spirit of this presentation, we're going to live edit the slide and use the terminology that should be there and start the presentation part over again. Because this is all about dealing with errors as you find it. Okay, so the object here is to create a face object type that can draw itself on the canvas. It's a compound shape, meaning it's made up of um, several smaller different shapes. And most of the code in it should be very familiar because we've been drawing circles and faces for quite a while now. Um, and we just finished an exercise where we worked with another compound shape, uh, which was house. My recommendation in the slides this week was to take the house object um, and teach it to be a face object. But uh, students I've been working with have started with circle, uh, which is a simple object, and moved back to face. I'm going to do the house to face. I think that's more fun and more interesting. Whichever direction you decide to go, I think this particular approach will work for you. The ground rules are keep the code working or as close to working as we can at all times. Make tiny changes with testing after each one and use our tests to verify that, we, that what we think is working is really working. Um, we'll be talking to the object. We will we'll take, make it talk back with console logging if we have to. Although the nice thing about these drawing objects is that they talk back um, and show us things without having to necessarily log. Um, we'll ask it questions and we'll train it to do what we want it to do. And what we're going to try to do is have some fun along the way. As I was thinking this presentation through, I kept getting this sort of relentlessly cheery, sing-songy voice in my head, um, which doesn't sound a lot like the normal me. And I realized that really this presentation is, is not about um, my style of programming. It's really about what would Bob Ross do if he were an object-oriented programmer. And I think that if you, um, if you remember Bob Ross at all, and a lot of people are familiar with him, he was the man who had the happy little paintings. And he was trying to show you how to be a great artist by doing little tiny things at a time and, and staying unstressed. And I think that if Bob Ross were an object oriented programmer, um, we would all have happy little objects and we would spend a lot of time talking about what our objects have in common, which is so much more than what divides them. So we have in, um, in the code we've already been working on, we've got a house object and we've got a circle object. Um, we also have a rectangle, but I'm going to leave her out of this. And what we need to do is create a face object that can do all the same things. It has to set context so it can know where to draw itself. We want to be able to set the color so we can have different kinds of, of different looking faces. We want to set location so we can place it in different places on the canvas. And we want to give it a size and have it resize itself proportionately. And last but not least, we want to ask it to be able to draw itself. So without further ado, let's move to cloud nine and take a look at, um, well, let's take a look at house. Okay, so this is one of our standard projects. We've got an HTML file that doesn't have much in it but a canvas. We've got a house object that um, actually does all of the heavy lifting and has a set of data properties and then a set of methods that allow us to do things with that house and ask it to change itself. 
And then we have a script here, which pulls that together, and in this case, draws two houses on the canvas. So here, if we want to see what that looks like, all we do is run this file, open up the canvas in the preview, and we can see that we have drawn two house objects. So the idea, uh, my recommendation in the slides, was to simply take that folder and copy it. Okay. Um, but it's now, we're going to call it draw face instead of draw house because that's what we wanted to do. And the question is, how do you start, how do you make progress on this? Well, let's just take the optimistic approach and first of all, rename all of these things to be draw face instead of draw house. That seems like it's going in about the right direction. Um, so, one of the rules here is we're supposed to keep things as close to working as we can at all times. And one of the things we know is that when we change file names, the HTML file, which has to pull all of our scripts together, has to also be changed. So, um, it's called face. Um, one thing I could do right now is just quickly prove to you that this code is broken. Uh, sometimes it's useful to just know that your code is broken when you expect it to be. Uh, that's not nearly as discouraging as it being broken when it's when you don't expect it to be. And let's see if we can do this with um, try and keep this window up over here so we can do live testing. And um, One of the things we see is that the code is broken, and if we needed to, we could even get it to tell us why it was broken. If we go to console, um, we see that we are not loading either house or draw house, which is a good thing because we're in a folder where we want to be loading face and draw face. So let's just fix the HTML. And now that the HTML is calling the two scripts that are actually in this folder, we should be able to shift refresh this and see two houses. Um, let's go to draw face for a minute. And we actually only want to draw a single house, which will become a single face. So let's just simplify this for now. Save it, come over here, shift refresh, and we have a house. A um, couple more things, I think, in the HTML. Let's just be, let's just dress this up a little bit. And um, Okay, make sure we're working. We just changed completely the wrong file. <laughs> so we're going to close this one. <laughs> and don't save the changes I just made in it. Um, I'm, I'm going to close these guys. Remind me when we need it that the code I'm looking for later is in 10. So if I come down here to draw, we can pretty much close that one too. If I come down here to draw face.html, uh, we're going to do. AG's house and um, save that and prove that in fact we changed the right problem. All right, so now we have code that says it's drawing faces, but of course we can tell that it's still drawing a house. So let's um, let's go here to the face class and um, what is the sort of biggest, most immediate difference between what we have and what we want? Well. First of all, we know we want a class called, we want an object called face, so let's just make it do that. And if we do that change, we're going to see that suddenly our house disappears. Okay. And I know that JavaScript's tendency to just 
sit down like a donkey in the dust and decide not to move anywhere can be really both frustrating and frightening, but it doesn't need to be. If, if you have code that was working and you change something small and your drawing disappears, A, you know exactly what you changed, and B, your console log is likely to be telling you exactly where the problem is. So in DrawFace, that script that's controlling the drawing, it says house is not defined. Well, that makes sense. We're working on faces, not houses. So if I come over here, if I have a face object, then I better knew my face, not my house. And just to be um, kind of neat and clean, instead of calling this H1, let's change this variable name to F1, which I can do with the rename feature. This IDE can refactor. And so if I rename this in the one place, all of the places where F1 appears change themselves. Kind of a cool feature, really. Um, you could also do a global replace, but uh, I kind of like the refactor and sort of change. So now this says that we're going to be making a face. That's optimistic. And we're going to save that, Control S, and come over here, and voila. It may not be a face, but it's a drawing on the canvas, and that's what we're after. So let's go back to our face class, which is what we're going to resolutely call this. Um, let's just, if we see a comment or something about houses, let's just get rid of those. And um, let's just talk about the difference between houses and faces. Um, one thing is, faces don't have roofs. So why don't we just go through here and get rid of anything that has to do with a roof? Okay. Um, one thing I can do, let me close that to make a little more space, do outline, go to the draw roof method, fold it, which is a nice way to just make it neat and tidy for getting rid of a lot of code at once. Did you guys see that? If I click this, if I click over here in the gutter and something is unfolded, which is its natural state, there's a little triangle here and I can fold it. And particularly when you are like deleting or needing to move a whole batch of many, many lines of code. It's actually kind of nice to fold it before you get rid of it. And then it's easier to just know that you are not taking either too much or too little stuff. So let's get rid of roof. What the heck? And um, if we stop there, uh, I think we'll break the code. Let's see. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Um, we do get the fact that there is an error here. So draw roof happens late enough that um, it's not keeping the whole code, the whole script from working. But it is telling us that we're trying to call this method we just got rid of. So let's come up here. Oh yeah, and we have a draw function. Okay, and it's trying to call draw roof, but we don't have one of those anymore. And um, Oh, and we have a message here about drawing houses. So let's just say we can't draw the face. Remember, we're a face now. Okay, so um, let's just make sure that code's still working. Okay, and we don't have any console errors. Um, there are a couple things here that make this face different from the face we want. Now, for right now, we're going to ignore the fact it's square. I, I don't think you can hold corners against a creature. So it's true that this has corners and isn't round, but we're going to get there. The real difference here is that this is that this face doesn't have two eyes and it doesn't have a mouth. So I think what I'd like to do next is um, is change this so it's a face that has at least two eyes. So let's do that. Um, let's, let's take the window and use it as a proxy for drawing an eye. Okay, so um, I don't want to do this. What does draw window do? Oh, 
Okay, draw a window. Does a thing. Um, I think we'll just be quick and dirty. And we're going to call this, let's fold it again. And let's just duplicate it. What the heck? We're going to get rid of this code eventually anyway. So we're going to have a draw window one and a draw window two. Okay. And the only difference between this eye and the other eye is that one is on the right side and the other is on the left side. So I think what we want to do is, is basically any place where we're moving this eye to the right of the midline of the house, let's move the other eye to the left. So um, how do you do that? Uh, you do it by multiplication. So, right, if I'm moving this guy, the width of the house over this direction to the right, and I want to move over to the left, I just have to multiply that by um, minus one. And let's do a couple more things. Well, actually, let's make sure that that code runs. Okay, so we've broken this line of code because we no longer have a draw window. Um, so let's do draw window one and duplicate that and have draw window two. Okay, and let's see if that code runs. Okay, so, oh, that's right. The offset isn't from the midline, the offset is from the left edge. So instead of going minus one here, um, the offset is really just, instead of all the way over here, it's half over there. Let's see, that might be approximately right. An approximate is good enough for now. Okay, that's kind of loopy, but what the heck. Um, And then let's rename a few things. Um, we can, again, use this rename feature in the IDE, but if we want that to be, we should be able to, huh? wasn't that interesting? Okay, that doesn't work. Um, so what I want to do is I want to uh, change all instances of draw window two to draw I2. And I happen to know this code pretty well. So, I'm going to come up here, and I know that we only do that in one place. And here, we're going to draw I1. Um, and we're going to just get rid of these lines that talk about windows. Okay. We're going to leave the internal stuff here since we know we eventually have to switch from rectangles to, um, to circles for the eyes. Let's just leave the internal stuff here and just make the, make the name of this correct. And let's just prove that again we are working. Um, and the other thing is um, our faces by default have black eyes and why are we getting yellow? We are getting yellow because someplace oh in draw face js we're getting an eye color. So let's just not let's uh let's go for something that we know we're gonna have to change. Um, actually, let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's change the frame color to something like um, blue. Ah, purple. That would be ugly enough. Okay. I'd like to keep this color object there because we want to be able to change both the face and the eye eventually. So if I come back here, 
And I, if I come back to face and everything is saved. Um, okay, I got a purple face with two black eyes. And if I was um, really just trying to entertain myself, what I might do is um, come over here and for the mouth, um, instead of a door, what if we use that as a mouth, just as a placeholder for now? And we come down here to this method called draw door, and we call it draw mouth. And let's get rid of the comments that talk about the door. Um, and let's just not worry too much about, um, about that, except for that we'd really like it to be long the other way. So why don't we just make the door width into 75% of the face and the door height into something more like a tenth. And then we should have a long, a, I say this, short, wide looking mouth. Okay, and, um, and let's just run that and see what silly thing that looks like. Uh, come over here. Oh, we broke it. Why are we broke it? Draw mount. Oh, we have a typo. It's nice to keep this console open um, instead of having to remember to open it because I know for, the, for various reasons people forget to open it. And having it just there telling me what I did in terms of a typo just is all the help in the world. Okay, so. It's a goony face, but think of that as a face. Now, um, let's just do a few more things that, that turn this more into a face than a house. I thought I had changed this. Okay, always make, always make forward progress, right? Right. Okay. So what does a face have? A face doesn't have frame color, door color, or window color. Um, a face has skin color and eye color. So let's just take the frame color and do we have arena? We don't have arena. That's too bad. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is Oh, yeah, we want to replace all those frame colors. Any place where frame color shows up, we would like to call that skin color. Okay. And any place where we have window color, we would like that to be. Eye color. And we're going to kind of and and we're going to get rid of the door color because we know that when we get to our little happy face, um, just reminding me what the what the happy face is supposed to be looking like. Okay, we're just going to want a little arc arch there, so we don't need a color for the mouth. So um, I'm actually going to get rid of the door color. And that is going to have the sort of weird effect, I believe. Um, if you're not specifying the color correctly, you get black. So let's save that and see if we... Um, okay, so we're losing... Well, that's interesting. We lost both our mouth and our eye colors. Let's take a look at what we got. Um, in draw face, let's make the skin something new. Uh, blue. Okay. So we need to trace through the various colors. So I'm going to hand in a new color here. I'm going to take a look at 
set color in face. And we have a few things going wrong. Um, first of all, the color object isn't going to have a frame. It's going to have a skin. So if that skin property is defined, we're going to assign it to our skin color. And it's not going to have a door at all. So get rid of that. Okay, and instead of a window, it will have an eye, a color for an eye, and we're going to assign that to our eye color, and we're going to get rid of this, and then I think we probably, I don't think we get any error messages by spec, this code is still broken. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, so now we've got this nice black face. And that must be because the skin color is not getting correctly assigned. So let's go find where skin color should get defined. Um, yeah, see, we're still using this frame color here. So let's call that skin color. And um, now I'd like to change that to draw outline but or draw skin, but I don't want to change too many things at once. So let's fix one thing at a time. Draw mouth um, is using that and draw eye should be using eye color. Okay. Now, does that get us anything back again? Okay, so now we have a blue face, uh, which is just garish and hard to look at. Let's go back and do like blue. And we're getting nothing at all for a mouth color. Hmm. Well, I want to do one thing, which is draw skin. Let's call this draw skin. And back up here, we need to call it draw skin. Okay, so I would like to point out at this point that we now have a draw function, which only talks about face and draws skin, mouth, and two eyes. And really, if you think about it, we've made enormous progress. So let's just um, see if we still have it working at least as well. Okay, so it's light blue. That's fairly ugly. And we're still not getting the mouth. You gotta wonder why. Um, why don't we just turn this into something? We're gonna get rid of this whole thing. It's gonna turn into an, uh, just drawing a line. So let's just see if we can get the mouth to appear again. Okay. Not quite sure why that was keeping it from appearing at all. I would have thought it would be black, but there you go. Um, okay, so we still have this fairly goony face, um, and it's probably about time to start changing it into a circle from square. But um, I think I'd like to make sure that we can assign, successfully assign. Um, a new color to both the skin and the eyes. So let's go up here and assign um, an eye color of oh, light green. Okay. And you remember these these color names can either have capitals and they're not. It's not case sensitive. Um, so let's see. Do we are we Okay, so we have a face. It's a square face, I admit, but it's a face. And we can assign colors to it. So um, we aren't currently resizing it, but we're going to change so much about the shape that I think we should not worry too much about resizing yet. It's probably about time to tackle our biggest, um, our biggest challenge, which is to turn the face from being square to being a circle. 
and then the same with the eyes, and then turn the mouth into an arc. Now, being an object-oriented object Bob Ross kind of programmer, what I'd really like to do is, is go straight to just using circle objects, but that's not the point of this week's assignment. The point of this week's assignment is to turn the drawing code we have where we are drawing using native JavaScript arc commands. We have that code in non-object oriented format. And what we want to do is turn that into an object oriented format. So let's see what we got for drawing a face. Um, if I look over here in my workspace, this stuff I closed up here. Um, okay, draw random face. Let's take a look at what draw random face does. Okay. Um, in our current face object, we have a draw method that's calling skin, mouth, and two eyes. And that may be actually a little more complicated than we need to be. Because if you look at draw random face, draw random face has this really rather nice um, function, which already can draw this cool stuff. Um, and so I'm wondering if, I wonder if we could just adapt that. So let's just take this function, which already does proportional drawing, and see if we can use it. So let's pick it up. And let's set it down here in face. Um, down here under all these other draw methods. And we're missing something to left. Ah, oh, good. I thought maybe we had one more. Okay. So that's a non object format for that. And what we know is that if we want draw face to be a member of this object, we need to change its declaration to look like this. We want it to be my draw face and assign this function thingy to it. Now, oh, and draw face depends on two other methods that must have been that code I was just looking at, okay? Right, draw face depends on this draw circle and draw arc. So let's go grab those two, okay. Now, I am changing quite a bit of code right now. Um, and I think probably the next thing I wanna do is, before I even do a copy, is prove that I haven't so far broken the code. I'm adding a bunch of code to this object, but because I'm not calling it, I haven't broken anything yet. And not breaking is a wonderful thing. Okay. Um, so once again, if we want these functions to be members of this object, we have to change the way we declare them. Okay, so we change the way we declare them just a little bit. This dot draw arc equals wait, can't type. Okay, and so now we've got we've got a bunch of methods in here, and we're gonna get rid of some of them, but we have one called draw face. Okay, which call which wants to use draw circle and draw arc, but we know there's a problem with that because um, the draw circle is is a member 
of the subject, but isn't being called as like a member of the subject. So in order to call any of these other functions within this object, we have to say, not any old random draw circle. I, wanted, I want to call my draw circle. And how do we say my? We say it with the word, this, with this dot. So again, I'm, I'm saying I don't want to call a random function out there in the wild. I want to call my draw circle. And I want to call my draw circle, and I want to call my draw arc. And um, let's see. So we've added a whole lot of code. We aren't currently breaking anything, I don't think, because we're not calling the code we just added. Which one of the things about nice interpreted languages is that you can add code, even if it's broken, and until you actually try to call that code, it doesn't harm anything. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to um, apply code formatting, just because it makes me happier, much happier. When my code is neat. Tra la la. There, there's my Bob Ross. Um, and so we have sort of two com competing visions here of how to draw a face. One that was very house-like, where we, where we broke um, the compound object into four separate methods. But really, that is a bit overkill for draw face. So I think what we'd like to do is simply for now, call draw face. And um, once we do that, okay, we actually know we can get rid of all of this stuff. I'm just gonna hold it for a minute. That doesn't really get rid of it, but it just kind of makes it disappear like, okay. So draw is now calling one method draw face. And, um, Let's just see. I think that's going to break the code. So it ought to, by all that's right. Okay, our face disappears. And what do we get for an error message? Um, down in face at line 85, in the method draw face, it's saying that that it that the JavaScript engine can't read the property radius of undefined. Um, I want to close this outline for now, just so we have a little more code space. And that's fair. Uh, we have this kind of mismatch of expectations here, where this function, draw face, is expecting to have a face object handed to it. And now it's running inside a face object. Urgh. Okay, because up here where we were using it before, We were calling draw face with a face object that had specific colors and things set. So um, let's just take a look and see if we can shim that in some way. Um, get rid of that guy. I don't want to be changing him. In face, um, we want a face object. And the face object needs a color. We don't currently have a color. We've got a skin color. So let's let's fix that one thing. Okay, because we know that the face object we're working in has a skin color, not a color. And the question is um, clearly, okay, just to jump ahead. I mean, what we need to do here is replace everything that says face object with um, with a property of the object we're in. So everything here that says face object should become this. And I could do a global replace, but I think there's a cool thing we could do instead, um, which I've been wanting to try, and I don't know if it works or not, so let's give it a shot. Draw face wants a face object. And oddly enough, we're calling it from inside a face object, 
uh, maybe a slightly different face object than it was expecting, but still, you know, if you think about it, we're in a face object. So, and we know how to refer to the face object when we're inside the face object. Um, and that is, we could hand draw a face this. And at least in some languages, that would work. So let's see if it comes any closer to working. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> it doesn't work, but we also don't get any error messages. Um, I'm not ready to give up on it yet, so let's take a look. Maybe that just can't be done at all. Let's just see, though. OK, sometimes you just got to make the code talk to you. And oh, there's a little there. I'll give up on this in about one minute if I if it doesn't work. I've just been wanting to try it, and today's the day. Now, I can see one thing that's a mismatch between the face object we currently have and this face object is I think we're still inside a square face object that has a width and a height instead of a radius. So why don't we switch that and give ourselves a radius of some default value and see if that helps. Now the other thing is the face object that we, oh, right, the circles have centers and squares have corners. So let's just do center X and center Y. Okay, so now the face object we're inside has a center X, a center Y, and a radius. And this cool code I'm trying to call down here wants a radius and center X and center Y and radius and yada yada. Uh, let's just see if that is going to work. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is a face. It's just in the wrong place. So let's adjust where that face is. Um, doesn't look like set location is working very well, but we know that set location for circles, which faces basically are, should be just sending in just a, um, oh no, they send in two points, it's an X and a Y, but I bet when we changed center X and center Y here, we forgot to change them here. So, okay, that's a pretty big face. Let's make our default radius more like um, 100 again. I kind of like this guy. Okay, we got a face. Is that cool or what? <laughs> and it's particularly cool because we shimmed in this code from a non-object. I say this. We shimmed in some code that isn't wasn't working inside an object before, it was working on an object. And so when we call it, we are cooperating with the way it used to be by saying, well, if you need a face object, I'm a face object, let me just hand you me. And then down here, that becomes a face object. And we had to change our internal properties a little bit to cooperate with it. But once everybody cooperated and was using the same definitions for things, we're suddenly drawing a face. And in fact, that face can resize itself and stay and stay proportional, which is, you know, was not easy to do in the first place. So, um, so for example, let's set location to um, canvas with 
divided by two. So let's put in the center of the canvas. Height divided by three. Okay, so let's let's set the location in the middle of the canvas. And in the spirit of the thing, let's just go ahead and make sure we can break it. Um, and let's go for a slightly more traditional way. I don't know, is gold a color? And green. We do a gold face with green eyes and Okay, well, our eye color is not working. Um, we need to fix that for sure. Um, and then we want to also make sure that we can resize it. But let's go fix that. We're setting the color. Uh, and if we go here, let's close that and open this and go to set color. Okay, so if we get Skin, we set skin color. If we get eye, we set eye color. The default eye color is black. So the question is, when we actually draw it, what color are we using? Oh, okay. So at this point, I can either use face object, or I can use um, this. We're inside, we're about to make the big transition. So I think just to be consistent, I think what I'm gonna do is use face dot eye color. And I'm gonna put that in two places. Okay, and all right. So now we've got, we can change the eye color. Let's just make sure we can set a new size from here. So f1.set uh, size, uh, and let's give it a radius of like about 150. Now I'm a little concerned that I didn't see set size pop up in the, in the um, IntelliSense. So let's just go back to here and see. We're supposed to have a, oh, I wonder if I used the version of this that didn't have set size. The deal is we're supposed to have set size, right? Hang on a sec. Yeah, everybody's supposed to have a set size. So I guess we're just gonna have to make one. What the heck? Um, I actually have to type in some color. New radius, yada yada, and this dot radius is another new radius. Okay, so my radius is equal to the new value of radius that got handed to me. And now set size gets called. And let's just see if size changes. Oh, no, size went away. F1 set size is not a function. Oh, capitalization. Um, let's see if that works. Okay, so now we have a big face. Um, and we're real close. Uh, we've got some cruff to get rid of. So we still have this draw skin, draw mouth, draw eyes, and all that stuff. Let's get rid of that. It shouldn't break anything. I have them nicely folded, so that makes them easy to delete cleanly and know that I got just those and nothing else. So I'm going to replace all of that with one blank line. Um, I'm going to save it and I should see that my code all works exactly the same. Okay. Um, and let's see, I'm going to, okay, so we got, we got two big issues left really if you think about it. One, it's kind of dumb 
to have a function here that only calls a function here. It's not fatal, it's just, it's just a little dumb. So um, we either need to take this code here and move it into there, or we need to take these, this nice little error wrapper and move it down here and change the name. So I think I'm going to do the former, but before I do that, I think I want to go ahead and, and stop passing in this. Okay. Because what I really want is for all of these lines of code to refer to the object I'm in. So I'm going to take and just do a global replace of face object dot with this dot and replace them all. Makes the code a little smaller, which is always a good thing. Um, and verify that I can, in fact, still draw that. Um, and I can. And so then what I'm going to do is gut this function and just take all this code, which is really not all that much code, pick it up, set it down right here instead of calling that function. I'm going to apply formatting just because I need to for my own sanity. And I have this Oh, I copied, I thought I cut. Okay, so I'm going to fold that, get rid of that with one blank line. And if all's going according to plan, I should still have a face. So let's just, um, I think we're done actually, but let's just do this. Um, let's do var f2 equals new equals new face and um, f2 draw and that won't that probably overlap but let's just make sure that all the defaults are working mm. probably that's just not shown that's Oh, <laughs> there's the error message right there. <laughs> right. The minimum thing, the minimum number of things you must have for R shapes to work <clears throat> is you have to instantiate the object with new, you have to set the context, and then you have to draw it. And it makes only makes sense if you set the context on the right thing. Okay, I don't know how many times you've done that yourself, but I've done it to myself enough times. Okay, so um, the default location is up here. Uh, looks like the default, the default color is um, white. Let's fix some of our defaults. So um, we don't know where the center of the canvas is. So I think what we used to do with this is we used to go out 100 um, for center X and center Y. Uh, the default color skin color was yellow and the default eye color is black. So let's do that. Make sure that this now comes down a little bit. Okay, so that's, that's the one, that's the little face that we've had all along. I'm just going to, um, I think I'm going to call that face zero and move it up here just because it's simpler to think about it that way. And because this isn't in, a, um, in an object, we should have our rename button that works for us. And if I delete that and call it F zero, all those are fine. And now I can draw F zero. I can put F one in the middle of the, of the thing and make it I don't know, uh, corn, flower, blue, that's a silly enough color, with um, 
pink eyes. That's going to be sufficiently ugly for anybody. And I think I'll make it small because it's so ugly. So let's make it 75. And we should be able to basically prove that the default face will draw something decent and reasonable as soon as you set its context. And that here we are proving we can set location, set both versions of the color, set the size, and it'll still draw. And so that's what we're trying to do here. So let's just see if we're there. Yep. Ooh, that's ugly. Um, so leave it as an exercise to the reader to um, put four faces on that. And just to review a little bit, uh, we really haven't touched the HTML since the very beginning. Once we got it pulling in the right, right files so that we were actually running the code we're working on, we really didn't have to touch it at all. Um, we've only used draw face the way it was supposed to be, which is to drive the different uh, faces that we wanted to be testing with. And then all of our code was in here. Uh, and I don't think there's anything super extra left in here. Um, we had to change from one type of drawing to another, but we had all that code lying around. We took a good advantage of this to indicate my, and also to be able to pass the object we're in around, which is just frankly a really cool thing. Uh, might be a little hard to grok, but trust me, it's cool. And we were able to retain this code that we had used before. And, oh, do we have, no, we do have a problem though, don't we? Oh, that's interesting. It's always good to inspect. This is only working because we have a global variable up here called CTX. So if I called this CTX0, and in both of these places, I change that to CTX0, uh, we won't be able to draw a face at all. Oh. Good thing we double checked our work. Hey, they disappeared. And why did they disappear? They disappeared because in draw a circle at line 55, just as the IDE is warning us, CTX is not defined. Okay. And that's because we don't want to be depending on global variables that may or may not exist. We want to be depending on this member variable that is set through set context and that our guard condition here in the draw function is testing. So the guard function was using this dot set con dot context, but the actual drawing code wasn't. So I'm going to use one of the uh, magics of the IDE. I'm holding down my, my alt key. I'm highlighting all of that and I am Control V to paste in this dot context, and I'm going to do that down here again. Oh, sorry. Before I start to highlight, I hold down the Alt key. I highlight the set of things in a column that I want to replace. I Control V, and they all change. That's a cool thing, too. And now I think my face will come back. Okay. So, uh, weren't quite done before. Now we're done. We have, we can draw these faces and the only thing left in the exercise for this week is to um, put four different faces on the canvas. I hope this helps. Um, I know Bob Ross is kind of, you know, sort of a weird thing for a lot of people, but I think this concept that you can take a cheerful attitude, you can make tiny changes and you can adjust your plan as you work along. If you put a stroke wrong, if you, you know, type something wrong, all you have to, if you're testing after every small change, then you, there's only so much code for you to look at. So the less code you can write before you test again, even if it seems like you're doing kind of slightly wacko things, as long as you can keep your code working, and then it's just a little broken, it's so much better than if it gets completely wrapped around the axle and I have no idea what to do next. So 
uh, that's all for now. I hope that you have been able to enjoy this.